How do you optimize and tune an AMD AM5 based Ryzen CPU to extract max performance? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In the It's Not Rocket Science series, we've been helping you troubleshoot and optimize your system to keep your PC running like a pro. It's Not Rocket Science and as you'll see throughout this series, it really is Lego. In this video, our focus will be on how to properly tune an AMD AM5 based Ryzen CPU, something every AMD PC gamer and enthusiast should know how to do. As with my previous optimization guides, I'll walk you through how to do this the easy way. No complicated hardcore overclocking in BIOS is required. And don't worry, these tweaks will not only increase performance, but will also help reduce your temperatures. So there's no risk to your CPU. So stay tuned as I guide you through how to tweak your AMD AM5 based Ryzen CPU the right way. So a question that I'm sure many of you are asking is, how do you unlock the performance of your AMD Ryzen CPU? As from my previous videos on the new 9000 series chips, there are a few important tweaks that you should consider making in order to unlock the true potential of any AMD CPU. The first is to undervolt your CPU with a negative all core curve off. Set. This can be done directly in BIOS using the Curve Optimizer option, or in Windows using Ryzen Master. You can watch my How to Undervolt a Ryzen 7 7800X3D video to learn how. For single CCD CPUs, I recommend setting an all-core negative curve offset. And for dual-core CCD CPUs, I recommend setting a per CCD negative curve offset. This is a tweak that is heavily dependent on silicon quality. So I recommend starting at a lower value for each CCD, say a negative 10 CO, and then checking your stability with a CPU benchmarking tool like Cinebench or OCCT. This this tweak is applicable to all AMD Ryzen CPUs and will likely give you your largest increase in performance, so it's one that I highly recommend. In addition to turning Expo or DOCP on in BIOS, you should also consider adjusting your memory sub-timings. You can watch someone like Buildzoid on actually hardcore overclocking to learn how to do this manually, but most motherboards now come with automatic memory overclocking options that usually do a decent job. For the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master, there is an option called XMP Expo High Bandwidth Support that when enabled tightens the memory sub-timings beyond XMP or Expo. In addition, a sub-timing tweak that helps boost performance and reduce system latency is to increase the T-Ref or DRAM refresh interval to 65-535. This will work on any CPU and is a common tweak used by pros to help extract max performance from a system. These tweaks are applicable to all AMD Ryzen CPUs, however, I wouldn't bother adjusting the sub-timings if you have an X3D chip because the performance impact will be relatively small. If you do decide to make these tweaks, I would highly recommend running a memory stability tool like Kahu just to make sure your system is fully stable. If you want to extract max performance from your Ryzen CPU, then it's also important to expand the default power limits. You can do this multiple ways, but an easy way to do this on the Gigabyte X670E Aorus Master that I used in this video is to change the PBO limits option to motherboard, which significantly increases the power limits over default values. The only issue with doing this is that your CPU package temps will now routinely go above 90 degrees Celsius under heavy load. So in order to keep your temperatures in check, I recommend adding a platform thermal throttle limit. I typically recommend using 80 degrees Celsius for Ryzen CPUs with one CCD and 85 degrees Celsius for dual CCDs. This will reduce your performance slightly, but it will help prevent excessive and potentially damaging sustained boost behavior. To take full advantage of higher power limits, you should also consider increasing the max CPU boost clock and infinity fabric frequency. I've found boost clocks of around plus 100 hertz tend to work reasonably well for most chips that I've tested. However, this is a tweak that is highly silicon dependent, so don't be surprised if you run into stability issues. For the infinity fabric frequency, which is the clock speed of the interconnect between the CPU cores and main memory, the approach is a little bit different. If I'm using higher speed RAM, such as DDR5 6400, I typically try to run an infinity fabric frequency that is divisible. So for 6400, I would try to run 2133, which is 6400 divided by three. If you use DDR5 6000 RAM, then I typically stick with the default infinity fabric frequency of 2000 megahertz, which is 6000 divided by by three. That said, I recommend testing different options in BIOS to see which one offers the best performance. For my 9700X with a kit of DDR5 6400 RAM, I was able to run 2133 MHz stable, which is an increase of approximately 133 MHz over stock settings. This tweak is also silicon quality dependent, so if you're having stability issues when running a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench or OCCT, then I would simply leave both of these options at default values. There are a number of additional tweaks that you can make in Windows to help 
extract max performance from your system. The first is to go into control panel, click on hardware and sound, and then click on power options. You can select the high performance power plan to ensure that your CPU cores don't go to sleep while gaming. There may be situations where selecting the balance plan is better, but overall the high performance option will result in higher average performance. Another thing you should consider doing is turn memory integrity off. You can do this by going to Windows Security and selecting Device Security. Under Core Isolation, click on Core Isolation Details and make sure that memory integrity is turned off. And finally, if you have a dual CCD CPU, such as any Ryzen 9, then you should consider either shutting down CCD1 in BIOS or assigning priority to the CCD0 cores in Windows when you start a game. For a Ryzen 9 CPU, you can force a game to use the first CCD by pressing Control alt delete and then opening the Task Manager. Once in Task Manager, you need to find the game executable file, which for Total War Warhammer 3 is called warhammer3.exe, and right click on it. Then select Set Affinity. In the Processor Affinity window that pops up, you need to untick CPUs 31 down to CPU 16, which is CCD1, while leaving CPU 0 to CPU 15 ticked, which is CCD0. You can then run the game, and the game engine will only assign tasks to the selected processors, which now corresponds to the first CCD only. So in summary, the system tweaks that I recommend making to extract max performance from your AMD Ryzen CPU are 1. Undervolt with a negative all-core curve offset. 2. Use Expo DOCP, set T ref equal to 65, 535, and adjust the memory subtimings. 3. Increase the PBO limits and set a platform thermal throttle limit. 4. Increase the CPU boost clock and infinity fabric frequency. And 5. Set the power plan, turn memory integrity off, and assign core affinity. The impact of these tweaks on performance can be significant and is summarized in this table. When implemented together, the boosting performance can be over 10%, which is is impressive. One important point to emphasize is that the performance boost that you are able to achieve will be dependent upon silicon quality. There is no guarantee that your Ryzen CPU will be stable with all of these tweaks enabled. After each tweak, I would highly recommend running a CPU intensive benchmark like Cinebench or OCCT and running a memory stability tool like Kahoo just to make sure your system is fully stable. If at any point you find that your CPU is not stable, then back off on that tweak and retest. This may take some time to get right, but the performance boost you achieve will make it all worthwhile. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the It's Not Rocket Science how-to series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you'd like to support the channel further and gain access to some really great perks, please also consider joining our new membership program. Bye for now.